So I didn't want to stay in, I couldn't stay in Laos because it was clear that the communists were going to take over fairly soon. And I didn't really want to become a monk in Thailand, so I thought, well, the next thing is to go to India and try there. So after my seven days in Burma, I flew to um, uh, India. And uh, after doing a few things and finding my way around, I took the train to Gaya. I wanted to visit all of the places that the Buddha had been to. So I arrived in Gaya very early in the morning when it was still dark and uh, took a horse and cart along the road to Buddha Gaya. And once again, I can still vividly remember, by the time we got to the river, eh, now there's a new road that doesn't go along the river. In those days there was only one road that went along the river. So as we were going along, <coughs> the sun had just started coming up. And you could see the river with the morning sun sparkling on it, and the mountains behind there, and the little village houses, and the fields of mustard with the yellow blossoms. And it was, I could have, <laughs> I could have imagined the Buddha and a line of his disciples walking along there. And we clip-clopped all the way to 10 or 12 kilometers to Buddha Gaya. And as we approached Buddha Gaya, um, there was a line of trees. And above the trees, I could see the spire of the uh, Mahabodhi temple. I knew what it was because I'd seen pictures of it. And that just, just to see that, once again, I had the first intense feeling of spiritual joy that I had ever had. Perhaps it was in part due to doing some meditation, which I had been doing every morning, and part due to, perhaps due to the mystical aura around this place. But whatever it was, at the first time in my life I had this feeling of intense spiritual joy. We arrived in um, in the town, and you know, I've been there a few years ago, it's a noisy, cluttered, busy place. In those days it was just a quiet village. And uh, when we arrived in, the, in, in front of the Mahabodhi Society, not the Mahabodhi Temple, there was an old monk there who became and remained a friend of mine for many years. His name was Venerable Panyarama a Sri Lankan monk who'd lived in India for many years. And he welcomed us. He got his servants to put our bags in the room. And we had breakfast with him and got to know each other. And over the next few days, I told him that I had come to Asia because I wanted to become a monk. And he advised me not to do it. <laughs> not to do it in India. He said, oh, India is a pretty rough place. Why don't you go to Sri Lanka? Because English is widely spoken there. It's a Buddhist land. India is primarily a Hindu country. He said, you'll find some good teachers there. Why don't you go to... And I said, well, what better place to become a monk than in India, the Buddha's homeland? And he said, well, all right then, if you like, I will speak to the abbot in the Thai temple. Maybe he'll ordain you. I said, would you do that? He said, yeah, I'll do it. So he did. And the next day, I got an appointment with the abbot, and I went to see him. And he seemed to be totally uninterested. <laughs> didn't encourage me in any way whatsoever. And basically what he said is, I'll ordain you, but you can't stay here. And I thought, I thought when somebody ordained you, they take you under their wing and, and train you for the next two or three years. Well, maybe they do, but he was not prepared to do that. So I was very disappointed. In Thailand, I decided not to become a monk because I wasn't particularly inspired. I couldn't become a monk in Laos because it was going to become communist, which indeed it did a few years later. 
I couldn't become a monk in Burma because they wouldn't give me a visa. And now it looks like I wouldn't be able to be <laughs> become a monk in India either. Goodness me. <laughs> anyway, so that was it. So I thought, well, maybe. I didn't really know very much about I th The only Buddhist country that I really knew something about was Thailand. I'd never really thought of Sri Lanka. Anyway, now I didn't know what to do. So I thought, well, whatever's the case, I want to see all the places um, where the Buddha had gone. So over the next few months, <coughs> I um, visited all of the places. I went across the border to Nepal and visited Lumbini, this, that and the other. And one of the places I wanted to go was Sravasti, as they call it. And you may know that my first name now is Sravasti. I'll tell you the secret behind that in a minute. <laughs> so I wanted to go to Sravasti. So I, it's, in those days it was very difficult to get to. So I ended up on a bus, bumping along a bumpy road in the dark. And there was not many people on the bus and it was actually quite cold. And the driver stopped the bus and he said, Sahit Mahit. I knew that meant Sravasti. So I got off the bus, the bus drove off, and I was there in total darkness with no lights or anything. I had no idea where anything was. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> you know, it takes a while for your eyes to adjust to the dark, and eventually it adjusted to the dark. And in the distance somewhere, I could see an electric light which illuminated what looked like a Buddhist flag. So, I mean, really, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> so I sort of muddled my way carefully, and then, oh my God, I bumped into a cow <laughs> sleeping on the road. Later on, I found out the cows always sleep on the road because when it's cold, <laughs> the the bitumen on the road is quite warm from the sun during the day. So there are dozens of cows sleeping on the bump. Oh God, another one. And, oh, look, and this cow got upset and he walked away. <laughs> so I got closer and closer and the closer I got, the more I could see, ah yes, it is a Buddhist flag. So I inched my way there. I saw a building and I found something that looked like a door which was sort of like a metal sheet. I sort of tapped on it, nothing. I tapped on it some more, nothing. So then I banged the door and straight away there was chaos. People shouting and dogs barking and things banging. And then suddenly from above me on the roof of the building a, a torch was shined in my face. Who are you? What do you want here? <laughs> A very friendly Buddhist welcome. <laughs> so, very aggressive voice. Who are you? Why are you here? So I said, I'm a big Buddhist pilgrim. I, oh, all right, wait a minute. There were more banging and what have you. And then this door opened. And I went in. A lamp was lit. And there was a Buddhist monk there. I later found out his name was, he was a Sri Lankan monk, his name was Metiwala Sangaratana. So he asked me a few things about myself and he said, okay, have a cup of tea, go to sleep and we'll talk more in the morning. And that is how I met the person who ordained me and who became my teacher.